Long gone are the days when sex education was an awkward biology class. But even then, it was controversial, since the topic is unavoidably wedded to morality. For example, how are discussions framed about who the partner is? Is pregnancy for starting a family or a horrible mistake? Is high school sexual activity expected or a concern? And should the state be involved at all? Today, those questions aren't even relevant to ask. The classroom conversation and the moral messaging behind it has totally changed. Children are taught that they have sexual rights to things like pleasure, birth control, abortion, puberty blockers, even gender reassignment surgery. If any of this is new to you, pay close attention to our first two guests. They see firsthand how this new gender and sexuality revolution is impacting the children. We're joined now by Dr. Quentin Van Meter. He's the president of the American College of Pediatricians and Sharon Slater, president of the Family Watch of Family Watch International. Welcome to you both. Thank you for having us. Sharon, uh, let me start with you. Could you just start off by telling us what is actually being taught in schools today, specifically what is meant by this comprehensive sexuality education? Well, the American College of Pediatricians has, ha we have a quote on our website from them that says that comprehensive sexuality education goes way beyond normal sex education. And it's a dangerous assault on the health and innocence of children. We've created an analysis tool that shows that there's 15 common harmful elements in comprehensive sexuality education programs, including they work to sexualize children, to get rid of their disinhibitions with regard to sex, they promote abortion and sexual rights, and they actually, many of these programs turn our children into sexual rights advocates. And could you give us some examples? I think uh, we brought some with us today. We could play that tape, and can you just talk us through some of the things they're actually teaching? Sure. Let's, let's start with the um, publication is perfectly normal, which is in many libraries, school libraries across the United States. It's very graphic with depictions of children engaging in masturbation and various sexual acts. Now we've blurred out the graphic images, but this is not blurred out for the children when they see different couples, heterosexuals and homosexuals engaging in sex. And there's been a million copies in print. And this is for age 10 and up. Then there's making a difference. This is a federally funded program. It's in my state and many of your states. And it teaches children that they can share their sexual feelings through the, such things as oral sex, masturbation, grinding, anal sex, holding hands, touching each other's genitals and saying, I like you. And that's for age 12 through 14. Then there's get real, which one has this controversial vocabulary list where children can learn such things as pansexual, queer, and heteronormative. Then there's Planned Parenthood's LGBT education, which has incorporates queer and trans issues in everything. And here they want children to label themselves like a disabled non-binary person or an asexual gay teen or a trans boy of color. Or how about an undocumented queer boy? And, and here's a quote from this publication, I'm a polyamorous queer teen who needs to know how to have safe sex and relationships with multiple partners. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. We have hundreds of examples like this or uh, uh, many, many programs like this that are being implemented all across the US. Wow, there, there's some really shocking things in there. We can't even show them on TV, but kids are being shown them in the classroom. Um, Dr. Van Meter, that kind of brings me to you. The we're just talking about, you know, the gender revolution. Oh, we just lost him for a moment. Can you still hear us, Doc? Oh, there you're back. Good. Um, you know, transgender and gender changing your gender, gender reassignment, surgery, all these things. We're hearing a lot about uh, these lately, which you know we definitely didn't hear about in the past. What are you seeing um, in your practice and across pedi for pediatricians across the country? Well, it, it seems that since mid-2000s, particularly about 2006 and beyond, we went from hearing about the idea that children could be transgender, uh, not, not adults, but children, uh, a clinic set up in Boston as a single entity. And subsequently, we are now up to uh, over 65 transgender clinics across the nation. We also have Planned Parenthood providing 
uh, medical uh, transition treatments for uh, males and females who are transgender, and online presence called Plume, which is an open-ended uh, online ability to uh, be interviewed by physicians uh, and medically and possibly recommended for surgical trans, uh, uh, transition, if you will. So it's gone from a very rare, uh, almost unheard of circumstance to something that is in one particular county uh, in, in the Pittsburgh metropolitan area, in one school district, uh, they, they're claiming that about 10% of their ch childhood uh, class are people are, are transgender. And that, that is, uh, that's, that's a multi-thousand fold increase in the amount of these kids presenting. So there's, there's a social contagion phenomenon, uh, which I think explains most of this. And, and how young are we talking about here? especially the ones that are looking for medical intervention. The medical intervention had sort of switched, if you will, uh, to sort of late, mid to late teens in the recent uh, decade. Uh, there is a phenomenon called rapid onset gender uh, dysphoria, which describes primarily teenage girls, a, a ratio of girls to boys now of seven to one, whereas before, uh, before all this began worldwide in the adult population, the ratio of transgendered uh, adults uh, were Two, two times male to one time female. So it, it's a flip and a, and a rapid increase in the number of uh, patients presenting. And they are getting treatment. What is the impact of that treatment? What's that treatment look like? What happens? Well, it starts with social affirmation and, and people in the, in the field of uh, cl clinical psychology who know childhood uh, psychology very well and childhood development indicate that there is a trauma in giving a child a sense that they are a different gender than their biologic sex, uh, that this imprints on them and does inexorable damage. It's, it's, in, it's in and of itself an adverse childhood experience to be treated as if you were the opposite uh, sex in terms of looks, address, uh, mannerisms, pronouns, uh, names. So uh, we have a circumstance where that's harmful and that's done to young children. Uh, the next step is medical uh, affirmation, and that is uh, giving the uh, teenage child, but uh, prior to that, bro blocking puberty, uh, pause for a second. Uh, once a child reaches uh, and begins puberty, uh, the opportunity to interrupt that, uh, is, they, they call it a pause, if you will, but it's not really a pause. It's actually stopping the natural, uh, necessary uh, maturation of the human body from a uh, non-reproductive uh, individual to a reproductive adult. And so puberty is blocked uh, and very quickly after that uh, cross sex hormones, that is to say uh, estrogens in females and testosterone in, in biologic males to change the physical appearance of the body. And then eventually uh, to have surgical uh, removal of perfectly normal, healthy, functioning, physiologically normal body parts, taking breasts off females, uh, taking out their uterus, ovaries, fallopian tubes, uh, sewing on an art artificially created uh, penis, which has no biologic function other than to look like a piece of anatomy. And in males, taking uh, the scrotum testicles and the penis off uh, and uh, replacing it with a hole in the, in that they bore into the body between the bladder and the rectum uh, so that that person can receive a phallus uh, and, and inter intercourse, if you will. These things are, are very, very prone to have medical complications and surgical complications. The side effects of the hormones in themselves uh, creates devastating illness and shortens the lifespan of the individual. And Sharon, I asked, where, where is this coming from, from what you see in terms of the curriculum, what kids are being taught in schools? Well, under President Obama, a program started where our federal government was putting $100 million towards this comprehensive sexuality education. And most people don't even know that their children are receiving it. But this is a, a worldwide agenda. We work at the United Nations and other countries around the world, and the exact same principles, the exact same curriculums are going everywhere, not just here in the United States. In fact, this is a global agenda that's also pushed by the World Health Organization, which is supposed to be protecting and setting the standards for everybody for having good health. But these are their standards for sexuality education for Europe. Zero to four, teach children about masturbation and pleasure at age nine, about orgasm. And then they actually send children to Planned Parenthood to learn about their sexual rights, where they'll learn that children have a right not to have to tell their sexual partners that they are infected with the HIV virus. 
And this is unconscionable. They're promoting sexual rights at the expense of sexual health. Be sure to watch the entire episode, now available exclusively at EpochTV.com, a completely censorship-free premium subscription platform. Brought to you by the Epoch Times. See you there.